Hey! Oh. Happy Thursday to hey, everyone! Hey. Yeah! <laughs> Welcome to another Carvers and Creators, a weekly demonstration and discussion with pumpkin carvers, sculptors, and multi-talented artists from around the world. First, we ask that you give us a like and a follow on the platform you're watching us on. Let us know in the comments where you're watching from and if you have any questions for the Carvers and our special guests. If this is the first time you've joined us or you're a longtime watcher, you have joined us on a very special night. Why is that? Well, I'll tell you why. It is our 100th episode. We did it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yes. The crowd, please hold back. Oh my God, the crowd is wild. <laughs> Don't rush in my room here. <laughs> we want to thank all of our great fans out there for making this possible. Uh, we, we could not do it without you. And uh, what was a, we started with our first episode to see how it went. And here we are a hundred episodes later. So thank you for that. Let's Cheers, everybody. Harbors. Let's yeah. do it. First, he's an artist and sculptor from Boston, Massachusetts. He is a judge on season three of Outrageous Pumpkins starting on October 2nd on the Food Network. It's Paul Dever. Welcome. Yeah. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday, everybody. Good to be here. Yes. Happy Thursday to you. Thank you, Lenoro. We appreciate you, your support. Yes. Next, he's a multimedia sculpture artist from Tucson, Arizona, and a finalist on Halloween Wars 2019 on the Food Network. It's Matt Harper. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Happy Thursday. Good to be hello. Here. Daddy. Hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello, hello. Our returning guest tonight is a puppeteer, artist, Disney Imagineer, and also a judge on season three of Outrageous Pumpkins on the Food Network. Please welcome Terry Harden. Happy 100. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. We, we are Thank so, you so, so much happy. for being here. Yeah, this is thanks, Terry. I'm gonna say that a lot. Happy 100. That's quite <laughs> that is quite an endeavor. Can't even imagine it. Oh, it's oh, it's, it's, it's it, awesome. It, it's been a long road, Terry. It's been a yeah. long yes. road. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My name is Michael Mondragon. I'll be running the show, moderating comments, and chiming in from time to time. Hey, tall glass of water. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Let's check out our scopes from last week. The oh. carving subject. Oh, my God. I, 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 I'm just going to let you just go, Paul. This is outstanding. I don't know where you want me to go. First pumpkin of the year. Yes. Um, oh, yeah. And we had Smug Wolf. Smug Wolf. So, I went very, you know, cartoony, something friendly for the children's. And then I figured the best way to do the first pumpkin of the year was to uh, make it look hairy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's the work in that. Yeah. Yeah, a yeah. little bit of work. Little yeah, bit of work. It, it, he looks smug. He He's does. super smug. He, it, what up, uh, SOB? This he was <laughs> super smug. I, I love that technique you use, Paul. I've never even tried it, but I don't think I, I would even want to try it because it's. You perfected that thing. It looks so goddamn good. Or dog. Oh, I can't hair, take credit you for should, it. Matt, you should, because that is a cool thing to do. That's lots of fun. Oh, oh thank you. Yeah. yeah, John John Davis. I'll give credit to John Davis. When we were carving in Chicago a couple of years ago, I was doing a, a werewolf on a real big pumpkin. And I was saying, how I, I got to figure out a way to do hair. And he kind of showed me, he saw some somebody do it with, to do dragon scales with mm -hmm. a really big tool. He said, I'll bet if you use a smaller tool and you take the time and layer it, it would look like hair. So for the next hour and 45 minutes, <laughs> I did it. And yeah, I think it looks, I, I like that look. It's a pretty, it's yeah. different. Yeah. Yeah, it's really Paul, cool. Paul, I'm going to cut this short a bit because we have a special guest. No, we don't. We do. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey. <laughs> How are you guys doing? We're doing good. good. You're not a chop just to come and see us. I'm on the set of chop. Looks like I gotta go to where it's quiet so I can hear you guys. Yeah, otherwise you're busted. <laughs> What's going on, Terry? What's going on, Paul? Hey, I miss oh, you, you, miss you know, girl? just celebrate the hundredth episode of Carvers and Creators right now. Thanks hey, for joining guys. us. One hundred, the big one hundred episode. Yeah, is this the one hundredth? 
Yeah. On 100. Oh, Can you believe it? Get a shot out of the chop kitchen or something to celebrate, right? <laughs> oh, no big deal. <laughs> Can I do that? I'm yeah, why get not? It. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, look at this. Ooh, oh, my, one of my favorite nice. sets. Nice. Yes. Favorites. <laughs> Wow! Nice. Oh, they have they have uh, peanut M and M's, um, guacamole, yeah. and, and liquor. That's the first round, right? Yum! There. yum. <laughs> <That's> delicious. <laughs> All right, I got some tequila. Yeah, the rest of what you need, Sunny. Yeah, we're celebrating, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely celebrating. This is a big. This is a milestone. I don't know how we get to two hundred, but I'll tell you. So it there is. There it is. Is. Let's celebrate. Hop in the court to your 100th there, guys. Oh, wow, look at that. Well, oh. I mean, if, if, if we're going to do that, we all have to cheers. Well, yeah. I, 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 I got to say. The carbon oil is early tonight. Outrageous. <laughs> outrageous. Yeah, yeah, in in honor of Sunny joining us. We have the whole. Well, during the 100, we've got to do a link up throughout. Is this stop one on the publicity tour for Outrageous Pumpkins? This it is actually, um, I taped Rachel Ray earlier this week and will be on next week, I think Tuesday, uh, mm -hmm. talking about Outrageous Pumpkins. And really? Yeah, the brilliance that is Terry and Paul. So it's, oh, it's, it's, a, it's really cool. <laughs> it's like finally to tell people about the show. I'm writing. I'm writing that. I say. I say. I'm writing that down. <laughs> I'll text you right. I'll text you all the information as soon as I get the airtime. We were going to run it on Monday with Rachel Ray, but I think um, they want to oh, no. make sure it doesn't get preempted for the Queen's funeral, so they're going to push yeah. it to Tuesday so we get our press. That, that is, is a really, good really. That is so great. <laughs> that's why. The, that's why those people make the big bucks. It's they really yeah. Move things around. Real good that's friends. <laughs> That's so, what you, so I, I would like to announce to you guys that um, my guy, who uh, he's at home right now and I'm in the city shooting this show, he did surgery on my most giant Atlantic giant pumpkin in the backyard because we had a little bit of stem rot and it looks like it's going to pull through. Oh, yay! <laughs> yeah. Time to carve that baby. Listen, it's uh, it's looking like it's about four to five hundred pounds with the yeah. over the top yeah. measuring. And then I have um, two others. So I have teeny baby P, little baby P, and big baby P. So teeny baby P, it looks like it's about 100, 200. The middle is about two to three. And the big one, I, I think it's going to get over 500. We'll see. Oh, that's so exciting. Wow. How those, do you, those how are do the you do surgery? I mean, I, I'm curious how you do surgery. Do you have to cut out the rot and then just hope it, it, it heals itself? Yeah, so if you guys know Ron Wallace, he does the Wow Wallace um, fertilizer and stuff like that. He's up in New England. I've been kind of leaning on him for advice as to what to do. And I, sh I sent him some vid uh, video and photos of it. And he suggested what we did, which is uh, we first cut it away from the vine uh, because we've had a lot of rain. So he believes that's what happened. And yeah. then using a spoon, we just scooped out the rot and then made a one part, nine part solution of one part bleach to nine part water and just spritzed it the the kind of open wound if you will mm, yeah. and within a few hours it dried right up and looked beautiful so um, hopefully so cool. it'll last <laughs> oh my god shout out to you man not all heroes wear capes I <laughs> do that you know surgery for me because i've literally been coddling these things since they were seeds so uh, it was a little bit Nerve wracking. You I'm impressed grow. that you got them to grow to that size because I've tried a couple times and something always happens like at some stage that ruins it. But I, have to tell you, I think it's beginner's luck, but I also did it on these elevated beds oh. instead of in the earth, which was a yeah. huge endeavor. Um, I think that kept me away from a lot of the things like the critters, uh, some of that ground rot that can happen. Um, and then it allowed me to water it and have it drain out instead of it just kind of that moisture hanging out in the earth. And I think that really helped because you guys know it's it's all about the weather when you're uh, doing pumpkins. Yeah, it's in California, they're just trying to get them wet. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had a drought all weather. summer. All yeah, summer we got no rain in New England. What so. pumpkins are going to look like here in California. I saw the first batch at Ralph's and they were terrible. So they must They're going to look like raisins, Terry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're bad. We're there. <laughs> I didn't know. 
Newsflash, oh. guys, I got to get back to work, but it was really fun hanging out with look, you. Look, look, this is a great picture. Look at that. Thank you for stopping by, Sandy. We love you. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time. Please at, let us know about uh, Tuesday. Oh. Look, it's the judge's table. Oh, oh, my gosh, there we are smiling. <laughs> oh, hey. Hey, to your crew. Look at that. Yeah, you guys remember Sean's A. Hey. hey. Of course. Do I still look red? Do I still look red? I, I mean, look red. <laughs> I've been out in the sun all day. I had a golf day. Look, I was just saying, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. Look the, of course, you're going to look red, Paul. Yeah, baby. Um, I'm always red. But I look great at Thanksgiving, Sonny. It all fades away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I want an invitation. I want to come hang out. I want to get on the boat. I want to do all the fun stuff with you. And Terry, you already know I'm coming out there to get my car on very soon. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love you. You're always I, welcome. I truly believe you can turn him into an artist because you said you can do it for anyone. And I, I believe that after watching you work. Actually, I think he already is. It's just helping him discover it. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you so much for having me, guys. I got to get back to work. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you so much for stopping in. in. That was so sweet of you. You're the best, Sonny. Thank Appreciate you so much. <laughs> All right. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Yo, that was fun. That was awesome. She's the best. She yeah. really is the best. So she's the best. She, what a great host she was. Wasn't she? She's great amazing. Person. Yeah, she's so smart. A great person. You know, you just play off her energy, and it was just, it was great. So, oh yeah, yeah that's a great way to say it. Yeah, that's right. You do play off her energy, and you she is cannot just... be dull and boring around that lady. <laughs> no, and that's just who she is. Like some people can turn, like when they say "let's go" and they turn it on. You have your TV person. Out. That's just that's sunny. Yeah, uh, yeah. Great. I mean, you know, I'm sure there are times when her husband's like, "Please, not now," but uh, <laughs> but you know, mine says coffee first. Uh, <laughs> what, a, what an exclusive too to have all three of you on our show live are you 100th uh, for the 100th no i mean that's what's really like the best right there so cool yeah. so cool we're yeah. only 15 minutes in and it's, it's going to get better and better right this is awesome. <laughs> there's no place to go but up sorry matt yes. oh that's gonna hurt I mean, it was really funny. Tequila now. <laughs> yeah. I love this ride. You guys are like, it's early. I'm like, on the 100th, all bets are off. All bets are off. I, Back I to what you were saying, I Paul. Know you, I don't know what to do for show 200 now. I mean, right now, I don't know. Exactly. You can do it. Well, you we'll have one of the we'll have the sitting president on or something. There we go. <laughs> Maybe an already, astronaut. Maybe we'll be on Mars by then. We'll have like Elon on or something. There you go. Wow. Perfect. So Maddie, here's yours. Awesome. Yes. Smug yes. Wolf. So I, I got lucky and got one of these um, red, what do they call them? Red curry squashes. And so it's curry, kind of like, yeah. and it's like a little mini red Hubbard. And and I, I wanted to do like kind of a wolf cub that, you know, got, was like, you know, his older brother just bit his tail. And so he turns around and he's like, I'm going to get you back. Like something like that. But his nose was a stem and I, I fought with myself back and forth. Do I cut it off and like put an, an actual little wolf nose on there or just, so I just decided to leave it. And so there he is. Uh, uh, I said it on the show when you were doing it and I'll say it again. That was such a smart use of the shape of the perishable item. Like there we go. whatever it was, you found the perfect shape because those curries do have sort of like a giant pear shape, right? Right, right. The nose, but the you muzzle was right yeah. up the back. Like, I don't know how you yeah. saw that, that, that that could be the nose, but within an hour, you it was like, Jesus, look at that. He's already got a muzzle. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, that's the blessing is that if you're trying to sculpt something, why try to make something that uh, you need a muzzle? Find something that is shaped so that God helps you with this. That's and right. what I love when I saw this one, which you posted, I told everybody that this this wolf was saying the name is Bambi. <laughs> right? cool. Bambi. You know, because he's just like, you want to make something of it? You yeah, know? he's got the, like <laughs> it's about to growl, but he's also yeah, exactly. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. So good. It's amazing. So good. Really fun. Super fun. Well, I work in pixels and vectors. So here is my smug wolf. Uh, for this week. Love oh it. my God, oh my Boston God. reference. <laughs> Thank you. I was going to say, um, if uh, I'll give a dollar to anybody Gubba. to name this person. That's Peter Wolf, Wubble Gubble with the green tea. <laughs> there it is. Peter Wolf from uh, the lead singer of D the Jay Giles Band yeah, from Boston. Yeah, 
man. Yes, sir. Uh, Met him in a deli one time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Standing right in front of you. Yeah. He was just a local guy. You always saw him in Cambridge. Still is. He's not dead, so that would be weird. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you might want to do him again then you know if he's you no i don't you know i, I stay like, far away from the people's republic of cambridge it's a whole it's different really easy oh, to yeah. go and watch your 100th show so he can see he's the smug wolf he is <laughs> I'm sure he's super a nice guy he's, he's <laughs> smug in this photo because that tea that sweater looks so good on him that's why he's smug. he knows he looks good yeah yeah smug uh, wolf uh, on wall street <laughs> <laughs> uh, I always got to turn it into something else. So uh, I was actually afraid of this one. I was going, I don't have anything except for Peter Wolf and this whole thing. What am I going to do? And I just, it just came to me and uh, I'm like, thank God. Well, uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It came to you and it's and amazing. It was great, and it's great. It's great. Thank you, yeah. thank awesome. you so much. Yeah. You might get sued by Peter Wolf because I think that's the name of his next album, but yeah. <laughs> it might be. you might want to copyright that real quick. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so Terry, uh, I'm going to introduce, reintroduce you to the fourth member of carvers and creators responsible for choosing our carving subject tonight. It is the hollow wheel, the center spinner. And as always, Paul's going to tell you more about it right now, right now. Oh, Hey guys, happy Thursday. 100th episode. Who would have thunk it? Here we are though. <laughs> So the wheel, like every week, for those of you watching, I'm sorry, it gets repetitive, but to those of you new, thanks for tuning in, and I'm going to explain this to you right now. We're going to spin this bad boy twice. First time is going to be the subject that we're going to try to carve, and then the second spin will be the emotion that we're going to try and carve into it. So for our first choice, we have ghoul, aquatic, fantasy animal, guest choice, so get ready, Terry, witch, zombie, clown, vamp, Frank and Wolf. That being said, if we get Wolf again, we'll do a respin, right? There you go. Second spin. Disturbed, creepy, nervous, crying, disgusted, smug, terrified, embarrassed, guest choice once again, and insane. <laughs> nice. Oh, so many options. I know they're going to land on the only two I don't want. So here <laughs> we go. That works. Yeah. Yeah, right. Whatever. 100 episodes, guys. Hey. Guest choice. Ooh. Don't say anything yet. Ooh. Don't say anything yet. Because this guest choice is going to be. Terrified. Okay. Ooh, wow. Okay. Well, Terry will give you exactly. Terrified. It's a Terry. <laughs> I like that. Terrified. Does that mean it's guest choice both ways? It's no. <laughs> Well, oh I, I think you should be bigger than than a fantasy. I think you should do a fantasy animal. And Ooh, I would okay. be more specific, but I want you to be free to do a fantasy animal. Because okay. I was looking at that and said fantasy animals should be fun. And then you, that way you can do a terrified fantasy animal. Mm. Too. Yeah. Thanks, Terry. I'm going to eating an apple today, so I'm going to do a fantasy animal. And I don't know about terrified. It's very, very <laughs> It is an animal, yeah. The terrified hey, Granny the Smith movie. animal. The, the <laughs> Granny Smith fantasy animal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so easy. Softball. Piece of cake. Yes. Oh I'll, I'll be done. I can go. Yeah, right. Terrified and fantasy I animal. That's uh, I got I got it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Hold on, maybe I can use like Matt and I can put a nose and I can <laughs> there you go. like a something. Well, you'd work your way back. You might just that might just That's work. Mm, yeah. I know. So like so, but, so just to clarify, so like mythical animals from around the world could, you know, like uh you know uh, fantasy. Uh, it could be you could Chupacabra. make it up. It could be avatar. It you know what I mean? It's just okay. Make up an animal. Okay. Mine's gonna be a pumpkin animal. Yeah, mine's gonna be made <laughs> out of a pumpkin. Yeah. And it that can be like, whatever you want or something in myth, you know. I like it. Okay. I'm liking this a lot now. All right. So yeah. Wow. That makes two of you, the three of us. <laughs> oh, got this. Um, I'm having a uh, carver's block. Well, find something <laughs> with a muzzle. It'll go away. I know. Well, that's the thing. I, I you know what? I will. I'll, I'll do something with a muzzle, but it's going to be terrified, which is a whole yes. different, like the muscle in the face kind of lend themselves yeah. to different shapes that's it look eyes wide screenshot 
There we go. That's a double screenshot right there. What is it? Say that again. <laughs> As opposed to terrified. <laughs> mm. This butternut squash is feeling a lot safer for me these there days. You go, there you go. <laughs> I can't do it, Terry. I got a pumpkin on the table when pumpkins are available. Yeah. yeah I can't we, got right. pumpkin. we got to get everybody I'm jazzed up for Halloween. It. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, so we're going to give everybody five minutes to get their tools together. This will be our second uh, carving oil toast tonight. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, we definitely want to go around and see what everybody's having uh, tonight for their beverages. Uh, so we're going to give you some time. Uh, Terry, what are, what are you drinking tonight? I have tea. tea. I have a cup of tea because okay. after this, I've got work to do. Of course, I'm call I'm, you know, I'm coming in from California. So because I'm coming in from California, I still got work to do after this, you know. It's yes. not yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, like exactly. time. Yes. After we sign off, I have another eight hours as well. So do I, you? Understand. <laughs> I understand. Oh, come on. I'm a night owl. There you go. Okay. So we're, we're kindred spirits in that. Yes, of course. Matt, what do you got? So in keeping with the spirit of Halloween, I got a Jack. Oh, lantern and coke. Oh, <laughs> Jack and Coca lantern. Yeah, you know, it's, it's the word Jack's in it for kind of like, <laughs> right? Paul, what do you got? Okay, so what I have is I think I did this last year too. It's like a limited release. It's called, um, can you see that? Yeah, Haunted House from Allagash. Nice. It's a hoppy dark oh, ale. Hey. I'll give you one guess on what the percentage is. A hundred. Six, six, six. Correct a mundo. Let's see if they have a crafty little story. Cursed by our love for roasty porters. We I can't even see it because of the light. <laughs> <laughs> we summon the recipe of for haunted houses, roasted barley, and black springs, malt. Anyone? Uh, Ready to go? Well, of course. <laughs> ale, gravely dark hue, hopped with the crystal nugget, cascading in the northern brewery. That was ridiculous. Wow. But a good beer. But a good beer. Yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah, it's a great can. It's got, you know, the haunted house and all that good stuff. 16 FLOZs. Oh, Ooh. that's my favorite. But I do like the 6.66%. That's a nice yes. touch. Yeah, yes. That is a nice touch. I've well, seen some like. Beer. I see some like devil. Uh, uh, they have the devil in the title, uh, like a like a red ale, and they'll have like six six six. Yeah, uh, yeah like that. Um, the arrogant yeah. bastard should be six point six six. I agree. I, don't think, I, I think agree. It's more actually, isn't it? Isn't like an I don't think they even say what it is. Remember, they they're all they keep it. Um, it's like a trade secret, whatever it is. It's almost like a smug wolf, but an arrogant. <laughs> exactly. oh. Um, it isn't a smug wolf, but it's uh, mine is soul magic. S O L E on the buoy. Yes, and uh, it's actually in conjunction. Um, I don't know if you can see that or not. It's um, Hoka uh, running shoes. It's actually this is a collaboration yeah. with like there's like a whole bunch of running groups out here, and they actually run from brewery to brewery. And I don't know I, how that works, but I'm I, I don't want to be in that club. <laughs> I, I've, I've actually done one of those where you, you run and then get a beer and then run and get a beer and then you stop because you're like, I've had two beers and I don't want to run anymore. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'm done. Exactly. I'm done. The running rebellion. <laughs> but it does, uh, I'll tell you, it does make you want another beer. Yes. It, and there's biking groups too, but um, I don't know how that works either. So <laughs> you'll get it. You can get a DUI on a bike too uh, for all, all y'all. So uh, be careful out there. That, that might get me to, to actually run. I mean, that's like the only thing maybe. <laughs> hey, we want to thank, uh, we want to thank Johnny Pierce. He's super awesome with the cool. super stickers. Johnny, Thanks for the 10 bucks. We appreciate Thank it. You, Thank you so much. Good Maybe good somebody job. will give us a $100 uh, for a 100th episode uh, super sticker. Ah, we'll put put that out to the universe. Pitchy. Stop pandering. God. <laughs> <laughs> Stop pandering. Yes. Um, <laughs> but thank you, Johnny. That's girl. very, very nice of you. Yes. Thanks, very, man. Very, very nice of you. Shout out to Johnny. Ooh, all right. I got to... Um, so Terry, um, I wanted to uh, put this up. I wanted to know more about um, this right here. Yay. Oh, my goodness. 
Do I have any? I don't have any of the. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Awesome. Um, these are the Rolly Crump chess. <laughs> And uh, Rolly is a Disney is the Disney Imagineer and now Disney legend that talked uh, Walt Disney into making the Haunted Mansion scary by showing him uh, his Museum of the Weird. And this is Rolly Crump's Museum of the Weird. And uh, Rolly is is worked directly with Walt. A lot of Imagineers thought that uh, it was a crazy idea, but uh, Rolly really loved it, and he fell in love with with my work and decided to um, decided here's a set right now. There you go. Um, this is the queen, the queen, uh, the colors are bone and blood red. So cool. So Roly said, I don't want it to look like, like coagulated blood. I want it to be bleeding blood red. Okay. So this is the kind of thing that you deal with when you're working with him. And they're all of these characters are like super creepy Here's the side view of her. Here she is in a clay. Um, so I sculpted her in clay. And then as we fly by, there you go, nice and close up of, of her scariness. But this is a chess set. They're all five, uh, a little over five inches tall. There's some details on her feet. And then this is the um, this is the pawn. And I'm reworking oh, wow. him now. I'm reworking him because I he doesn't look, you can see the drawing down below. It needs to look more like that. So I, I've been moving and bending. He's the next one. He's the, the next oh one God. I work on. But you can see these sketches of Rollies. They're just they're just beautiful. And uh, he chose me. There's another one of it. So you can see kind of I sketch to try and see how I'm going to make the chest piece. Oh my gosh! So it doesn't um, so it doesn't uh, break. And here she is starting. You get to see how I actually, you know, work on them and everything. Oh, yeah. 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 So it's just a, we're going to do a book and we're going to do, a, um, you know, there's the chair. Again, that's the bishop. So Are you doing all, all of that's just my favorite one out of all of them. It's one of my favorites, too. I love it. I love what yeah, you did it, 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 I just, I thought that I deserved to have a little bit of uh, a reprieve. So I said, I'm going to do the Bishop because that is my favorite piece that he's done. And he's just really excited because uh, he's done. he said, this is the last collaborative project I'm going to do with you, Terry, and with anyone. And I picked you. So, oh, cool. so I was really super excited about it. And, uh, you know, right now, um, Rolling is 90s. So, uh wow. So I'm trying. I want to get it done quickly as possible because I would really, really love him to be able to hold it and enjoy it. And uh, I, you know, I'm hoping that he will be able to do that. But yeah. you never know about life. So I just keep going and keep going. And that's one of my deadlines. <laughs> so right. I gotta get going. I gotta hurry. You know. <laughs> we'll see. You know. Um, it's a crazy, it's a, it's a great opportunity. Uh, people ask what if it doesn't sell? And I say, if it doesn't sell, I, he'll have a wonderful art proof, uh, because my, my satisfaction is that I get to do it and I'm so happy to be the person who gets to do it. So I'm happy. I'm happy, but it will sell. It's just that it is going to have an expensive, uh, it's an investment. Let me just say that. I don't want to say sure. expensive because there are people out there that'll say, no, it's not. And I'll go, yay, you're the one that the whole chess set is for. But you also have to have the real estate to be able to, to do this chess set because it takes up a card table. It oh. takes an entire card table. It is just a massive set. But it's gorgeous. And if you love, this is the first time the Museum of the Weird is actually being you know, celebrated in three dimensions. So he's very excited about it. And it's cool. It's just, it's, I'm really proud of it. I'm super proud it's, of it. You know. Yeah, you should be. It's amazing. I can see a problem here already. You want to eat the shavings. Oh, oh yeah. You, know, with pumpkins, you might as well do it with an apple. I can't, I can't even peel an apple without. That's what I'm saying. Peeling. I'm like, I'm like, uh oh, this maybe wasn't the best idea because it's making you hungry. Um, <laughs> it's funny. Uh, well, there you go. But okay, anyway, I 
very I'm very honored and excited that he that he chose me. We we actually had decided to do this 15 years ago, but he for whatever reason we didn't. And now he said we got it. I said, can we do it now? And he said, yeah, let's let's make it happen. Wow. So it's been it's it's very exciting. It's very very exciting. So yeah. Well, if you one see my, one of my all time favorite attractions at Disney was, you know, is the is Haunted Mansion. And, and my favorite thing to do is like when you're in that kind of meandering line that end up, you end up and any everyone goes in. Yes. All kinds of really cool little sculptures in there of if they're not on the part of a um like sarcophagus or some kind of a gravestone, but then they're then they're set up as like a statue and every one of them are car just beautiful. And I remember like I'm I'm with my family this summer taking pictures like of more of the things as I meander through the uh, haunted mansion than I did of my family. And my, my kids oh my said, goodness, Dad, Dad, yeah, but I'm like, this is so cool. So I'm, I'm like, yeah. yes, yes. I mean, everything is designed. Roly designed the wallpaper, and and uh, you know, and Walt was going to make it silly. He just felt like it needed to be silly. And Roly said, "Can I show you something before you make it silly? Can I show you something?" Hey. And he showed him the, he showed him this museum of the weird, and uh, and Walt came back and hit him, just like you 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 bop your friend. Yeah. He went, Ugh. and uh, and Rolly just sort of looked at him and he said, "I had nightmares all night. Let's do it." You know? So <laughs> so Rolly was was responsible for Walt deciding that it didn't need to be goofy and silly. It needed to be, and there's a little bit of goofy in there, you know, because he's got, sure. you know, he's got to appreciate. But, but I have to tell you, uh, I'm really glad that the haunted mansion is a scary mansion. I just don't think that. Yeah. You no, know, yeah. I, I, I would, I don't think I'd like it as much if it was goofy and silly. I really am glad that he was able to do that. Yeah. And Disney tried to put some of his art in there. But uh, they didn't really do, you know, they didn't do the best job and, and it was big and they had to be big and, and everybody has fallen in love with this Museum of the Weird Stuff. So they, they can't wait. They just really, really, really want, you know, to have this. So we're going to do three tiers. We're going to do first the entire chess set for those of you who just have to have the whole thing with the board and everything. And then you get a book with it. And then the book is also sold separately for those who want to be a part of it, but maybe their budget doesn't quite hit there. And then in the middle, you get to have a representation of each piece in a custom box. So you get six of the bone or six of the blood and uh, in a custom box with, with a certificate. And that way you don't have to buy all 30, what is it, 32, 34 pieces, whatever it is, a lot. Um, but you can, you know, have the representation because there are so many people that truly love this this museum of the weird. So they're, you know, they're begging. You know, they're like, what what can we do? So I talked Rolly into doing that, and he was he was more than happy to do that. So cool. Well done. Yeah, it's exciting, and for me, it's just a party. I really thought I could do one piece and then price them, and everyone is a mischief maker. So I, I just have to wait till the mid, you know, the mischief makers get done, and then we'll see what what's going to happen. But super excited to be able to do it. Yeah, thank you for asking. I think I remember last time we were on, we talked about your hitchhiking ghosts, right? Um, yeah, they sold out. I still one of my favorites. Like, the, and and I think you even had like glow in the dark paint or something going on with them. Like, we're just well, like, I have the, I still have the black light ones. Okay, that's and what I, that's what I meant. Yeah, black light. the black light ones, but the illuminating ones completely sold out. So I don't have them anymore. And you, is that, you, is that that there you go, Mickey. Yeah, oh, hey, look at that introduction. Yeah, that's the black. Those are the black light guys, and I still have quite a few of those. Uh, mainly because I haven't really been marketing them because I've been, you know, putting my focus on other stuff. But I will start to market them. You know, I'm I'm one of these artists who just I'm not in that big of a hurry. You yeah. know, I'm like, hey, they'll they'll sell. And this is what I tell people: if you know your work is 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 sellable, then don't discount it. Don't. Everybody is so eager to tell an artist discount your work, and you know it's not laundry. Right. <laughs> it's, it's easy. It's easy for them to say that, right? It's well, it's a yeah. It's a part of your. 
you know, it's it's your work. And it's, I mean, you know, if you've got to eat, you've got to eat. But there are other ways that you can do this. And I just don't think that that discounting, I mean, other people may disagree with me. And if you do, you know, that's why we, we're in America. You get to disagree, you know. But uh, but my point is, is that your art is your art. You don't have to be mean about it. You just got to say, you know, it, this is my art and this is a part of me. And, uh, you know, you want to you want good stuff. You come here, you know. Yeah. So and that's what we did with these tears is is we said, you know, hey, we're we're going to do this chess set. But we're not going to say, hey, you got to pay all this money for the chess set. We'll do a couple of tears even do a book so you can have it in one way or another. And that way you won't be sad. You'll feel better because you got the chance to have it. And that's what's, what's good. So. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. So you were at a crazy Disney convention that I saw. I like it's way beyond my Disney expertise, but boy, oh boy, did it look uh, fancy. Oh gosh. D23. Better it even sounds fancy. D23. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I'm so not a fan of this convention. Oh, uh, and yeah. I'm a guest. Oh, well, just, yeah. I, Maybe we shouldn't talk about it. <laughs> I, no, we should because I think it's a mean convention. I think that if you're wealthy, they're going to cater to you. If you're a eBayer, they seem to cater to you. And I, and if you're someone who's just looking for something to remember this by or get in because you have a favorite person, you're not going to necessarily get it because they just seem to not. I don't know. It just doesn't feel like they care like they should. So mm -hmm. Terry is always like, hey, guys, you know, the the foundation is what makes your convention thrive. And the foundation are people who love you and they're not paying a gazillion dollars. There's people who love you and they pay a gazillion dollars. But there's people who love you and it's the person who's paying maybe 35 bucks or even 100 bucks. You know, you got to treat them special. Yeah. And instead of, you know, so you get excited about Disney and they tell you you can't queue up until 430 in the morning. So they queue up on the streets of Anaheim at 130. So now they're in line at 130 in the morning and it doesn't open till 10. Please understand. Oh my Lord. 430, it opens and they put you underneath the convention center on a hard concrete floor. Just tell wow. me how you think this sounds because I look at it and go, yeah, no. And then at around 930, they'll take you up and uh, and let you get in line. And then you fight your way in line and hopefully you're going to get the panel that you want. And it's just and they everything is phone centric in Disney. They've all decided that you're going to use the app. You're going right. to excuse me, mobile mobile order and uh, their Wi-Fi sucks. Oh, no. So there you are. You know, you're desperate because you want some collectible and you can't get in because their Wi-Fi is terrible. And the only way that you can get in is to use the mobile app. So so I always say to myself, good grief. Really? <coughs> I tell people, if you're not going for a if you're not going to D23 to see a particular panel or something, wait till around 11 or 12. You can walk right in and see the floor and see all the displays which are excellent and not be upset and sad you know and if you're right. not a doctor, even better you know mm -hmm. but i wish they would do it for people who you know we've got these people who just uh love it and they want to get that special thing and they can't <laughs> because mm -hmm. they've got a mobile order <laughs> and then they go in and they it's the wrong store. Now they got a mobile order again because they've got all these stores. It's just, it seems just so sad. What uh, meanwhile, the eBayer has got her children and her relatives so that they can get two of each. Oh, and really? I was leaving and there was this woman with cardboard boxes all over her. I thought it was a sculpture of a dinosaur. <laughs> hey. <coughs> because I saw another girl who had done a sculpture out of cardboard boxes and painted it for seeing red. And it looked so cute. She did the little red panda. It was really cute. So I thought this lady had done the same. And then I realized she was an eBayer with boxes and boxes like a pack mule. You could barely oh, see wow. the girl. And I said, she's probably smiling because she already sold it. On <laughs> she's already got it sold, yeah. Yeah, sure. she got it sold. So 
So it's just, it's kind of sad because the person who's there, who just wants to pick up a doll for themselves, or they want to pick up something for themselves, and they, they may not get in, they may or may not, and it's just, right. it's always been a kind of an irritation with me that this is the this is the case with this with this group i just go why why would you do that you know just limit it like for real limit it you know or, or maybe if you're one person and you're not you know a family i don't know i don't know the answer but it's really kind of silly so i love being a guest it's the only way i'll go in because otherwise I, I would just be i'd just be this cranky person all the time as you can see i already am because <laughs> you're alone yeah, we can tell. Yeah, horribly. Yeah, tell. you watch people suffer. You don't, you know, they spend all this time on beautiful, exquisite costumes to see their favorite person, and then they can't get in to see them. Mm -hmm. It's a sad. Luckily, sad. Yeah, luckily, luckily, our fans can see us live every week. Every <laughs> week, and you <laughs> <are> <laughs> so good to them. Line. <laughs> and you're very good to them. You take care of them. That's right. We love them. We Hi love guys. Them. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's what. See, there's so many examples out there, like carvers and creators, that they could go by. But, you know, <laughs> but come on. Yeah. Yes, let's make this good. We're very following exciting. the wrong business model, Terry, you know? Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. Is that well, what we have? Is this a business a model? <laughs> coming soon, and that's going to be awesome. That's going to be fantastic. And I just told, I would tell people, if you're very upset and you're very sad, and I always seem to find these poor people crying because... They really thought it was going to be different, and they're they're sitting and they're crying and they're sad because they didn't get to see you. They wanted to see, and it, it, it's sad. I don't I don't want them to be all all heartbroken yeah. like that. I just don't think it's I don't think it's nice to do that to people. So, yeah. so I I I maybe I care too much, but that's the deal with that one. Yeah. Well, yeah. um, Matt Matt and Paul got a little taste of that when we went to Monster Palooza because it was um, I I. I don't think you guys even knew this as like, um, you know, we, we went outside a couple times to go back and forth between our hotel room to get stuff. And then there was mm -hmm. like lines going around the, you know, the, that was unbelievable. Yeah. That was, yeah. that's crazy. But then you have to like fight, um, the part where all the people, all the, uh, people are signing. So like yeah. you have to get past that gauntlet and, uh, it was, it was rough, but so I can imagine Disney, which, you know, has a huge fan base, and then throw the money and all the, you know, I'm sure those people are like buying things inter for people internationally. And so it's, it's a big, it's a big deal. They're trying so hard. It's just like you get somebody at some point, I think it was once upon a time. Uh, and these young girls were just so hot for this one actor. He was super handsome and they were like, we really just want to meet him. And unfortunately they couldn't get in and they were on the floor in front of me crying and crying. <laughs> and you I had was the same problem like, with Paul. I was, like, yeah. Like, yeah. On. What? yeah, I was crying Come constantly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They came to see you. And then unfortunately, but basically I taught them gorilla. You know, I said, you're very lovely young girls. And I said, what you do is you stand in that corner because I know exactly all the ins and outs and stand in that corner. And when that actor comes around, you jump out, give him your puppy eyes and say, all we want is a picture or would you autograph? And mm -hmm. I know these actors, they want to do this for you. So mm -hmm. don't take no for an answer. And sure enough, not only did he give them a picture, but he kissed them each on the cheek for there a second. And they went crazy. Ah! Oh, you know, come on, you know you're. It's a it's a convention where you're trying to meet that fan, right? Of course. And, and they came back, and then they were crying and telling me how fun it. Was. Oh, thank you, Terry. Blah blah blah. And I was like, you just have to not take no for an answer. You you know you're not going to be aggressive. You're going to be passive, but you step out. The guards are going to go no. The actor is going to go stop touching me. I do what I want and I walk up and they, and they meet the fans. Most of the time, this is what they want to do. But for some reason, they're more sequestered than they want to be. Yeah. So a lot of times they are more than happy because a lot of them, it's, it's, it's new for them too. They've never been in a situation like that. And they're, they're super excited to have someone come up and get all, you know, excited about who they are and their character and, you know, whatever the reason is, they're they're thrilled. So 
So, you know, so this is what I tell people when, when they, when they want to do something like that is, is go ahead and jump in and say, Hey, I just want a picture and give them your cutest face. <laughs> <laughs> That's veteran tricks right there. Nice. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just give them, just give them your sweet face because <laughs> a lot of these people that they just, they, they want to, they want to do right by you. So so it's it's always this other stuff that you go, wow, this is just crazy. Yeah. So I got yeah. it. Go ahead, Maddie. Well, you know, it's 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 a pivot, but it's it's also I I we we are so blessed to have two of the judges. We had we had three, you know, a moment ago, but uh, of, of outrageous pumpkins and and I, I'm a huge, obviously huge fan of the show. I, I we're, we're yeah, a million, a million superlatives about how wonderful we, um, how, how glad and happy we are about the, the this show, a hundred show with you guys on it, accelerate. But I gotta know from a judging perspective because you guys are are you know in your heart sculptors, right? So in the show, we've got different rounds of um, of uh, types of, and if you if you go check out the uh, the Food Network link, it kind of shows you the different episodes. But I know that some of them are stacked pumpkins up to the ceiling uh, other ones are jack-o'-lanterns other ones are um, involve like movement and fire and color and all these other crazy stuff plus you have also have the sculpted pumpkins but because you guys are the judges i want to hear kind of a candid do you have a favorite of those favorite episode uh, well not a favorite episode but i mean like if you're going to be judging um ones that are multiples and stacked up into a big scene or or some that are a giant uh sculpted it, 3d face or a jack-o'-lantern or a mix of those do you have a favorite it sounds like what you're asking is a favorite category and yeah, my maybe that's favorite category is jack-o'-lantern because no one seems to know how to do it oh really i mean okay. seriously seriously this is the thing that uh and i don't you know the the discovery and food network are like don't talk about the current show talk about the other show so i've been on every once so i'll talk about the other shows but it yeah. always comes down to jack-o'-lantern category and we understand that most of these contestants that come like paul they're doing what y'all are doing right now okay yeah. and maybe yeah, yeah. what you want to do for um your show sometime is to force yourself to do a jack-o'-lantern. It will be very challenging for you not to do what you're doing. Wow, yes. Okay, okay. they, they, they <laughs> start to melt down, bless them, which is why I always fight for the jack-o'-lantern category because as a competitor, you don't want to show all your cards in the first round. You don't okay. want to be eliminated, but you don't want to show all your tricks, all your abilities, you know? Mm -hmm. At least that's the way, if I was going to be on it, I wouldn't be showing you that, but I would be doing a killer jack lantern, which means you know you're punching through and the yeah. light is coming from within, and you want to be clever about it. Mm -hmm. But if you sculpt in your first round, it may be super califragilistic expialidocious, but not the category. Uh, so uh, you don't want to forget the category as as a competitor and so you can tell already that i'm just this person that will will go there's no jack-o'-lantern you know <laughs> <laughs> okay so so punching through is a big thing and in, in actually creating something that's not only a jack-o'-lantern but but unique that's got to be the hardest thing in the world because everybody on earth is carved a jack-o'-lantern in some form or another. so you have to do something in front of you two that is going to be like out, out of world creative or completely unique, oh, right? like you guys okay let's just talk about you guys you guys carve all year which i find so flipping impressive anyway uh but but you carve all year and you're carving you're carving um you know you're carving like most people like to do they like to sculpt a pumpkin yeah Many mm -hmm. of these pumpkin sculpting people but i'm trying to see if i have a jack-o'-lantern in this because if I, yeah, here's one. This is the one I did last year. Cause I said, let me just show you what, but this is a jack o lantern It shows right. through. Right. Okay. And you, you've now, also got etching. You've the nose and the mouth um, have like a, a parchment behind it. So you can't see the light. Cause that mm -hmm. bugs me too. 
but I wanted to do something bold so people could see you're you're cutting through and you're you're playing with stuff, but it, you know, it doesn't have to be triangle mouth or anything. It's just that I want you to be able to um I want you to be able to understand that that's that's what we're asking you to do is please okay. use, please do that. And that's my favorite category because when someone hits it, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's amazing. So Yeah. From my, you know, Terry knows I'm from a different school when it comes to jack-o'-lanterns and I do like the etching, like the the maniac pumpkin carvers and stuff like that because that's a whole art form in itself. But I Terry has turned me to the 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 light side of jack o' lantern carving, <laughs> and I do, I do now have a great appreciation for it, especially when judging, because there is such specific things that they're almost like Easter eggs of words that are thrown their way mm. to let them know what they should be doing. Okay, okay. Does everybody listen? You'll have to <laughs> tune in and find out. Yes, you will. Kids. <laughs> Indeed, you will. It is interesting. It is very interesting. It very is interesting. interesting how people can interpret the rules. Oh, and Sunny does, does a great job of oh, she's saying the keywords and and you know she she's a love. She's she's on she's on the she's on the side, side of the contestants, which is yes. what I love about her, and that that's just wonderful because we yeah, don't, we great. want every we want everyone to win. Every year, we yeah. want everyone. That's to the win. hardest part. I, that's why I don't think I, I mean, I can't say never say never be a judge, but that's got to be the hardest part of judging is you, 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 you respect their effort and their artistry so much and, and the effort they're putting into this thing in a very difficult situation. Cause right. They're timed. They're, oh. they're outdoors. They're there's, there's lighting issues. There's a million things that are, are, oh, are yeah. because it's a live piece of produce. You, you never know what you're carving into. So all of that and, and, and it endears you to them as an artist. And then you have uh, on top of that, you have to walk by and say, and now, now unfortunately you need to leave. Oh, I got that just probably tears you, tears you up. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. don't want, you don't want any of them to leave. You're not, you're not looking for them to leave. You don't, um, you want them all, you want them all to win because they're yeah. all, they're all, they're all really good. They're the top in their field and they're, they're doing great stuff and they're really, they really stretch. And this is, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun, but I'm glad that I'm a judge. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> I will back you up a hundred percent on that. It was so much more fun being on the other side <laughs> Some of the say, Oh, I couldn't be a judge. And I'm like, yeah, I couldn't be you. Uh, <laughs> Such a great time. Such a great crew. And so talented this year too. And it was great to have it was great oh. to have Paul in this new season. You guys got to tune in because he does a great job. Oh, I do. Will. Well, that the jury is out. We haven't seen the final cut, Terry. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's true. And that can be different. Be ready, Paul, because you never know what they pick. <laughs> oh boy, there was sometimes when I something came out of my mouth, and I'm, I was like, "Please cut that out." <laughs> <laughs> I sound like a jerk. <laughs> Well, there well, is there, I, was, I was speaking the truth at the time. I there didn't want to sugarcoat a lot of things for these <laughs> guys. You're not there to stay quiet. Right? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. And that's the thing is you, you want to make sure that you do the best you can for them. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Constructive yeah. criticism yeah. is the way you get better. That's it. And there, there is a question for you, Paul. Uh, how hard was it to stay quiet about being a judge? Did, uh, you, oh. you, McFrazzle Stats, you watched the show. Oh, oh about being a judge? Yeah, I don't know. You yeah. watched the show all year. Did you hear me mention anything about it? Yeah, <laughs> uh, my wife told me tonight. I'm, I have a lot more gray hair than I had last year, so it was really hard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I look like I'm actually sparkly, like I have glitter now out in the, the sun. On the side. You were so excited. Oh my god, <laughs> you were so excited, and I was really so happy much fun. That you were so excited to do it. So I, I really was. Yeah. And I have to thank you, Terry, because you had a big hand in in, in getting me in there. Well, I and just I, thought you would be a good I thought you were a good fit. And you were, you know, there are criterias for judges. And you actually were one of the early shows. And I thought, you know, I don't know if he qualifies, but he sure would be good if he did. And they said, yeah. So I was like, woohoo. 
you know, good. Let's light this candle, you know. Right. Uh, and was pretty excited about it. Yeah. Yeah, me too. So really happy when you when you were able to do it, and really happy that you were you were happy to do it too. And of course, I think they were. I you know, I mean, like you said, we got to watch the final cut. Hopefully, they like what it is. <laughs> yeah, you might have some more gray hair coming up. Yeah, baby. <laughs> right. Uh, well, I'm gonna say like we had a lot of laughs. We while, did, yeah, while filming and while not filming, we all genuinely had a great time together, and I think hopefully that'll transfer yeah, into the finished product, and it yeah. should show because we were having fun with the contestants, and especially with the three of us, we were having a blast. She, yeah, so, it, just, it was just amazing. Yes, so, it was very, we'll very. Have easy. To, we'll have to be on again after it airs and we can really be lucid talking about oh, it. And we can talk, now, talk about it instead of like- We have to be careful because we promised <laughs> that we weren't gonna give any spoilers because we love you and we don't want you, we want you to be able to make those discoveries. Yeah, that record. was something I was gonna discuss. Um, uh, are we gonna spoilers. do a watch party? Are we gonna, Ooh, what are we fun. gonna do for- I think that would be really fun. I'm not in town, but fun. maybe for one of the episodes. That yeah, pretty cool. Oh, she's definitely doing some sort of a watch party. Unfortunately, y'all, y'all, see that? Now you know I'm serious because I don't say y'all <laughs> are on the West Coast, right? Where said show airs at seven o'clock at night, right? Yeah. yeah, my kids have to watch it the next day because it's at yeah. 10 o'clock, and dad doesn't care what time it is, you got school in the morning. Well, yeah. we probably should watch it with your kids. Yeah, the next day. So oh, I'm gonna stay up late, Terry. I'm an adult. Okay, I make. I know, but I would. I, I'm like, I'd be willing to watch it with your kids. No, you know what? When when I was on in 2019, my mm -hmm. mom and my aunt and the kids and like we had a little watch party at the house. They nobody knew, so it was fun. Like my my oldest couldn't sit still; like he couldn't handle the anxiety of it. Uh huh. So he was like walking around, and he's like pu pulling on his hair, and he's like, "Just tell me." Tell me something. Stop facing the floors. And it's like, I'm like, I don't know, man. I haven't seen it yet. I mean, Paul, <laughs> wait, what? This is something that I always talk to people about. Paul had to keep quiet for a whole year about whether or not he won. And that must have been so hard with his family. It was you awful. And now your son is there with his big round eyes going, just tell me. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so he didn't. Bad. He couldn't even sit in the living room. He's like, I can't take it. I can't take it. <laughs> and they're like, and the winner is, and he's just like, ah, ah. you, Dad. And then I was like, woo, go to bed. Go to bed. I I would have had so much fun with that because I would have been like. I don't know. Like, I'm not very good. And I, yeah. I, oh, I, oh, oh my me. God, I was playing that up the entire time. I'm like, do you know <laughs> when they film a show that everybody gets a chance to win and then they put their names in a hat and then when they edit it, whoever they pull the name out of the hat, that's who actually wins the show. Oh, man. But everybody got a chance to win and they film it. You are and serious. even guys at work have been You're like, evil. You're really? evil. You're evil. You're evil. I'm like, no, that's not Sick, how it is. <laughs> you you want to buy a bridge? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's awesome. that's but awesome. But that's the best part. Like, that's how I cut the anxiety of not being able to tell anybody is just completely goof, like real people in like, come here, come here, come here. I'll tell you. Yeah. yeah so here's the deal. <laughs> yeah. Here's what they do. Forget it. I, you know what? I forgot what I was talking about. Let me, <laughs> let me reset. Let me reset. We'll go. We'll go this again. Uh, well, well, I had I had the same I had the same uh, anxiety for Halloween War, same year, 2019. I remember I make it to the final, and 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 I at my house the night we were watching the final episode. There, um, one of my wife's good friends, her husband's a, a fire captain. So there was literally a fire truck in our cul-de-sac, oh and all oh these guys fully in uniform with their uh, with their uh, radios on. All of the, all so we got like oh, six boy. or seven firefighters plus friends, neighbors, and stuff like that. And then they're like, uh, "Oh, oh, oh, wait, what? Wait!" <laughs> they're watching them all in. I'm like, I couldn't say anything. It was, I a little not oh, it was a little different I scenario, think, but it was still really. You guys are amazing. <laughs> able to do that because you know it's i mean they're very clear about you better not but still it can be it can be very it can be very very challenging 
yeah. <laughs> it is challenging, but at the same time, you know what? When you're afforded the opportunity to be part of something like that, and you know yeah. whether you win or you lose, you sign up for that, and it is, you know, it is a privilege. Not everybody gets to do these things. Absolutely, right? so absolutely right. You play ball. You play ball, and and you want to, you know, especially with turn card. Like everybody there is. 10 out of 10 person like uh they sure are. ethical and personal level they're great people so i would never ever want to do anything that they don't tell like they don't want me to do i don't need yeah. to do it anyway i wouldn't you, you know what i mean you, you only really do that gotta kind of stuff you really got it as a contestant you got to bring it you can't phone it in you can't that's it. You, i mean you know if people get if you get lazy that's going to that's going to get you you know you everything everything you know Kind of like, kind of like Heidi Klum, Klum says, you either in or you're out. You know, <laughs> you gotta keep remembering that, you know, every time, or or it could bite you. You know. Sure. So, yeah. You always try to do, you do the best that you can in the situation, and then whatever the rules are for after the situation, you follow them. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's simple. Yeah, you know, if you can't follow the rules, you're gonna have a tough, tough one. Yeah. Exactly. And a nice. A nice uh, seven hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollar uh, NDA sending your way. That helps. Yeah. I'd be living on the West Coast because I'd need to live outside year round, so I'd have a tent. And yeah, that's the motivator. That there, I'm like, oh wait, you know, that's another that's reason I don't motivator. Oh, hey, kids, I won the show, but unfortunately, I told somebody beforehand, so we don't, oh, have, no. we don't have a house anymore. Yeah, we're gonna have to move, kids. <laughs> yeah. And actually, that's that's a really good point because you know that that is the the great equalizer. You go, yeah, not happening, not gonna. No. Yeah. Not gonna I like I like the screwing with people too, though. Like, be patient. Be yeah. patient. There's a lot of fun in that. I mean, yes. It really is so like, much fun. And owning a secret like that—that's a good secret. Not like. Oh, by the way, you have three weeks to live, but I forgot to tell you two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so and, and, good and Dad's going to prison too. Other than that, Dad's <laughs> going to prison. Dad's going to prison. Yeah, Paul. Paul loves golf, uh, but yeah. his second favorite sport is sarcasm. Yeah. Oh. oh my God, I think I could have my own show for sarcasm. There you go. <laughs> not, not, not these days. No, no. Hell to the new. No. <laughs> it's all with Back love and respect. Golf. I put Back I put golf. sarcasm on my resume. Are you kidding me? Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> so I got I got another question for the judges. So, um, because and again in in the world of the Halloween wars, there's cake and everything else. This is only pumpkins, and I know that's individual. And I know you know every now and then I know that they have some sharing, but mostly it's all one person. When it comes to like um, the the clock and and Inevitably, if, if I can sit here for the next five hours, I'll get some really great detail out of it. But because of the clock, you're not and the lighting and everything else that's going on with the, the stress and the drama, you don't get all of that detail. Do you are you do you find yourselves kind of allowing a little bit of that to to go? Um, I don't know. I, when, when I'm, I'm just kind of getting to a question about the detail specifically when you're judging a final piece. Well, if I talk about past shows which is what I'm allowed to talk about. If I talk yeah. about past shows, they get their hours. They do. Yeah. We make sure they get their hours because okay. this particular show, um, they this, these shows from the past, like if I do like uh, the show that had Griffin in it and Griffin did some amazing jack-o'-lanterns. She did yeah. amazing, amazing work, but her jack-o'-lanterns, what were, really jumped out at me during that season, I just thought this girl has really taken it, taken it to a whole new level. And I was very impressed with her. Well, they, they can do their, they do their designs and they let you know what they're going to do, but they have the right to change it. You know, should you run into, we're not going to say, Oh, look, you, you know, you've gotten a rotten pumpkin too bad. Ha ha. You know, it okay. really is about, it really is about what you can do. There's enough factors Matt, that are going to mess with you no matter how well you plan. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you could yeah. grab a cotton pumpkin or you could, you could, you know, this idea that you thought was going to work doesn't work. And in the case of Griffin, 
she had never done armatures before at that time. And that's what really defeated her because, you know, we can't tell you what to use as judges. We just can sure. we stand there and just pray you figure it out. And yeah. I remember that we were doing a lot of praying for her <laughs> because she was using sure. material. Like, no, don't use that. You know, and we're trying to, and they would say, you know, you can't tell them, don't, you right. know, it's not fair to the others. And it wasn't that we wanted to tell people, but you're sitting there going, I'd like to let them know that this would be so much easier if they did it this way, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and you can't, you can't, you can't do that. So you're always, but, but those kind of, you know, Paul talk about when you were competing and you had this, you know, your final pumpkin with that globe thing, whatever it was. That <laughs> well, Terry, to be honest, you were working so hard and we were there praying. We kept I like Griffin. Don't <laughs> like armatures. I, yeah. seen a them. I mean, yeah. God bless you if you want to use them, that's your own thing. Um, but yeah, that stupid little ball. And they really, they, that's the beauty of, of television is they put that into like 30 seconds of the problem I was having. I was almost done with my the initial sculpt. And I was like, I just got to put the finishing touches on. And for the next, it was at least an hour, right? Just an uh -huh. hour of trying to cut a hole in the top of a ball. And it was hot out. <laughs> it was, and we're it was so funny and I'm just like, oh, this is we, awful. We, we want to speak so badly. And they are saying to us, we're like, can't we just make one suggestion like to the group? And they were like, no. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> but well, I, I, well, Terry, you know this. I, 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 you know, when Frank and I were there, we were close enough to the three of you when you were talking. We could, yeah. Have. And I remember Ray saying, "There's so many natural elements around here that he That's could be using." And I was like, "Ah, he's he's talking to me, but he's yeah. not talking to me." <laughs> but he was right. Like in hindsight, knowing what I know now, like with experience. Yeah, there was so many natural, like the stems were obviously yeah. the choice. But at the time, I'm like, I'll just wrap a wire, which was a dumb move. So that's, but that's why you listen to the judges. Yeah, it will bless me. Judges are there to help you, and they he also have a so lot more bad. He wanted so bad. He kept saying, I just can't, you know, can't I say? So that's when he would say, that's when they said, okay, Ray, what you can say is you can say something, but you can't be specific. And that's when yeah, he goes, right. Natural suggest. elements. There's always <laughs> a way. <laughs> That's so good. Cool. Cool. Ray. There's That's always bad. money in the banana stand. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Got any grapes? <laughs> it was. It was. I. I really thought he was cute because he. He always was. He was always wanting to. To you know say to you please just please. <laughs> it, 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 because he could feel it. He could just feel what you were going through. And, uh, you know, he knew it. He had competed and he just, he That's just wanted it so bad. But yeah. That's yeah. what it is. It's just that being there. Like you just yeah. said, it. it. when you can feel the stress coming off of somebody and you know you felt that same stress for yeah. a similar reason, like the puzzle piece is missing. Why isn't the light going on? You want to be like, oh, geez, just try this. God, Nevin, just try this. Yeah, he's, he's, he was. He was. <laughs> but then you don't want to. You don't want to play. He was going to everybody. He'd go, oh, I'm gonna, you know, and it was just, it was adorable. It was just something I found very special in him was his his desire to just please let let me let let please let me help. Him. <laughs> this is so cute. All right, Pat. Well, maybe you guys could do an extended show slash workshop about pumpkin carving using armatures. Be a short ass show, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it as a YouTube short. Well, I, I got to be honest. I don't know if I have the space, and it would be an outdoor show because I don't have the space in in my studio to build something with an armature with the cam like. Look at I got a little tiny camera space here, but <laughs> I'd be down. That would be it, like a uh, a Follies show. That would be like a comedy <laughs> show. Down around. <laughs> and then watch, yeah, we watch the, we watch the pumpkins hit the ground in slow mo. Yeah. There you go. All, you always yeah. get all the slow mo. Well, just to be serious, we're kidding. We can work with amateurs. Yes, yes, <laughs> they are. Teasing. Teasing. We're trying to keep this as a uh, open concept that everybody can participate in. But Pat, maybe it's in the cards, bud. Maybe we will do something. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know I golfed today when I broke yeah, the key. The there you go. Hello. Frazzle knows the, the music we need to put on there. Yes, Yakety Sax. Yakety um, Sax from the Benny Hill Show. That's right. Yeah, exactly. you know. Well, well, I, we, I got to say, from an armchair perspective, I had to build a bunch for Halloween Wars, but they were always you know, holding cake up. Uh, they were never holding yeah. up. Maybe rarely I'd have. If you guys remember, like, um, my season, one thing that Tater Edwards did amazingly well is he made this giant uh, spider. It was a, a yes. Oh, I over the bed. That. And it had big arms and stuff. So he had to make – so that whole thing was an armature behind it and underneath it. And I was really impressed by it because it was holding a whole lot of weight. And the stuff I had to make – Hold weight was stuff for you know rice crispy treats and and cake and fondant and stuff, but equally tough. But man, I I also don't like doing them. No, <laughs> you don't no, like don't. doing any. I mean, no, no. I, mean, I, I think it's it's not that it's not that I, I to make a really cool sculpture it needs some kind of support. You need the armatures, but stuff. But I, I if you could give me a round ball of a pumpkin like this and. And say make a goofy face and put some appendages on it. I'd rather do that all day than uh, yeah. than make something that's like multiple stories and you know with giant wings and whatever else. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if you it's a good segue into a teaser for the show because we all know Tater has announced that he's a contestant this year. Oh yeah, and we're Did talking he? about armatures. So oh yeah, every oh my goodness, you kidding me? Everybody announced that they're contestants <laughs> on the show. <laughs> we sent out we sent out a little blur and those guys went wild. But we're talking about armatures and how good Tater is at building armatures. Yeah. Tune in to see what this kid, well, guy, I call Tater a kid because I feel he's my age. He's a good dude. But these contestants build the craziest armatures for the, the, the like stuff that I, we weren't looking at this stuff a couple of years ago like this. No. Uh, and, and I'm thinking in a couple of years, they're going to be doing it off of like, um, like, uh, Scissor lifts, you know, like <laughs> fifty feet tall sculptures and in, in X amount of hours and like scaffolding. Yeah, yeah. seriously, yeah. you got to build things yeah. around it, you, like OSHA's on set just to make sure nobody's. I, I hope not. I don't think it needs to necessarily <laughs> be bigger to be better. Listen, if you we're know? gonna do your jack o' lantern thing, Terry, we're gonna do things my way when it comes. to <laughs> <laughs> See, we created a monster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but seriously, the, it's funny that you mentioned Tater when he was on. Like, yeah, he's really good at that stuff. It's crazy. Yeah, it's fun, yeah, to, it's fun to watch that stuff, especially if you don't do it a lot. I mean, I know because I'm in construction, so I do know how to build structure. But to watch what they choose, you mm. know what I mean? How the creative mind works, what they think is going to be the best move right. was super impressive for me. Like I spent half the day on set going, wow, wow, that's different. <laughs> Ah, I never, I never even thought they would do that. Uh, but that's the beauty of the show. It's, it's outrageous pumpkins. These people are going for a lot of money. Yeah, you yeah. sure are. You know, the kind of money. Belt. I didn't win that kind of money. I'm just saying. <laughs> and that belt. Want that yeah. belt. The pressure Terry, creates you know, diamonds for sure. That's a sore subject for me, Terry. You know. <laughs> but I have a belt buckle. It has nothing there to do. You go. With, it has nothing there to do with go. outrageous pumpkins, but. Ooh. We have, Oh yeah, the GPTC start carving now. Yeah, someday I'll get a belt. You will. My I'll make you one. I'll make you one. I don't fall down anymore. <laughs> I believe you will. I'm not competing anymore. I'm retired from competing. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to say, you just got to make one at this point. McFrazzle says, yeah. "That's my belt you're holding." Ooh. Oh, gauntlet. There gauntlet you go. Going down. Yeah. down. Let's do it. But you, you know what's really cool too, Terry, and what we've, you know, we love our little pumpkin community. So I mean, with all our heart, honestly. And then there's this, there's outrageous pumpkins, which you guys are completely, a, a mind mogglingly in, in um, a part of that. I just wish I had this, I have this kind of in the back of my mind, wish I could be a fly on the wall for all that stuff. But I'll, I'll get to watch it on October uh, 2nd and make sure I don't miss anything. But um, yeah. Halloween Wars, um, we know a lot of uh, our friends and people who have been on our show are going to compete on that this coming season and have in the past. So, and then, and then, of course, the, the the carving contest. We've had friends of ours that have carved on last year's carving contest. We had, and, and who are also on shows too. So, I mean, 
it couldn't be a more fun, open, really cool community of, of uh, crazy so cool. just carving fools like us. So it's just, yeah, anyway. I, I mean, that's what's that. great about it. Yeah. You know, and, and teaching, teaching people. Uh, I love teaching people because I want them to discover that they have this ability. You know, it's, it's extraordinary. It's like any other art. When you practice, you get better at it. You Definitely. know, and and you guys, you know, people can tune in every week and take the challenge like you're saying, you know, you're talking about the challenges you guys give each other. So why not sit there and be a part of that as well? Yeah. So, I mean, Everybody needs a hobby, Terry. And this yeah. ain't a bad Thursday night hobby. To so sit well, yes. And I mean, it also allows people if they've got something around that they want to watch how you're doing it and and how things are and you always post i just think it's a a really good idea because people can kind of prepare and you know like the one thing i tell people is you know pumpkins aren't year round and you all talk about other things you can sculpt yeah that are not pumpkins that work well you know and that yeah. is a big that's a big help i know it was to me because i was like ooh. You know, I all of a sudden I'm sculpting weird pumpkins and I'm doing all this stuff I never did because all of a sudden I'm like, ooh, butternut squash. But oh, you know, so, yeah, sure. so I, I love it. I love that you that you guys, you know, are letting people know you don't have to just it doesn't have to be watermelon. And it doesn't <laughs> have to end. It's it, kind it, of it can be an apple. It can be a thank apple. you. And it can be an apple. Thank you, brother. Yeah, it's it, it, it's carving. It's art, right? There's not enough art anymore. Everybody sits and watches YouTube. My damn kids watch other people play video games. Oh, oh, Lord. Who would have thunk that one? I used to fight and try to beat the crap out of somebody to get the controller away from them. And now they watch play. somebody else play on YouTube. Well, <laughs> are they learning from it and then going and playing themselves? Or yeah, that's true. Right, right. right. But you know what I mean? Because you're watching the guy who's level 55 gazillion million. I yeah. don't play video games <laughs> at all because I get motion sick, so I can't. <laughs> but uh, but I do remember that, you know, sometimes people are looking at it to study. Yeah, that's true. You know, right. they want to study the techniques of the masters. So, right. Well, but for, so this show is a nice, I can tell a nice that, way yeah. to get a hobby. And because of the platform with StreamYard and Mick running the show, you people can read, you know, we can all have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. We can all get together if somebody has and questions, questions or, or, or you're yeah. asking about a tool or uh, how, yeah, do, exactly. how do we do this? How do we do that? We're going to stop every time and show you how to do it. We don't have secrets because, like you said, practice, practice, practice. Like, and it's nice to have a Eddie Van Halen sucked a guitar at one point. Can you believe that? <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? It's like I try to tell it to the kids. Like nobody's good at anything when they first start anything. Yeah. And I'm hoping in five or ten years, Matt and I look back on these and think, Jesus, we it's were awful. awful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're really trying to get better. We you're you're never there. <laughs> it's, we're having a good time. This is what I like to do this time of year. I realized yeah. I like butternut squash throughout the year. It's amazing. Yeah. I it is I like amazing. subtractive carving. So yeah. I'd rather do subtracting carving in this format because I don't seem like a lunatic in my basement in the corner. I'm talking to people have, I'm being sociable, you know, like you would. And and then when it comes time for Halloween season, we practiced all year long for these bad boys. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, it's it's so it's so awesome. And uh, and I sit there, people say, do you carve all year? I say no. But this one right here was my first pumpkin squash. Oh, I love that. Oh. Because I did weird, you know, I was like, ooh, I could do something weird. So oh, so, so cool. I did that one. And and I, I absolutely love the fact that I could, you know, people people got a kick out of that. And it was very simple, but I wanted to see what the – you know, squash was all about. And it's just, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. It looks like a baby prize winner, that squash that you showed. <laughs> yeah, it was. Well, really? the, little, the little pumpkin itself, and I'll show you again, the pumpkin itself is like a, a, a pie pumpkin. 
but then I put the, the but you can see at the bottom, bottom yeah. area, oh, yeah. you yeah, know, the I just yeah. inserted it in there and it told people how to get to my front door. Um, <laughs> it wasn't, Terry, it wasn't there when I visited from Monster. I know, I know. <laughs> you, you ran away. And they then run. I talked to people about, yeah. and then we talked to people about, you know, uh, you were talking about Mark's, you know, Mark Maniac stuff. And I kept saying to Mark, how come? You don't ever show them in full light when you're carving. And he says, he, he said, well, they're not that interesting. So I did this one and it helped me to understand what he was talking about. So I said, okay, I'm going to do the Mark Maniac version. And then I looked at it and I go, man, that really sucks. And I can see <laughs> that this is what my students are telling themselves when I'm sculpt, when they're sculpting. And then I put a light in it. Wow. It's unbelievable. It's like, yeah. oh my God. So now I'm experienced what my students are experienced. You're telling yourself the whole time you're doing this, man, this really looks bad, you know? Right. And then you go here and you go, dang. Right. You know, so I fell in love. I told Mark, I said, that was my first one. And I want to thank you because I really learned something about, I really learned something about, um, you know, the attitudes and the personalities of people. I wanted people to understand that, you know, you may not like it, but then you put a light in it and it's really, it's re sometimes it could be just blow you away when you put your light, your light into it. And I teach carving so that you can light them up. So I, I really like to light them up and, and, uh, and Mark laughs because he said, you know, I never thought of pumpkin sculpting, you know, and you light it up and I go, I, that's what I love to do for people. And, and uh, my the students just go crazy for it. It's really fun. See, that's what I, I like. You you teach a different a different way. You know, like you were saying before, a lot you, a lot of people want to dive into the sculpting, but there are a lot of people that want to do the you know the specific jack o' lanterns. And I don't think there's enough people teaching that really. I think there's a lot of people out there now teaching what we do in virtual classes, but to do the etching slash jack o' lantern, like like you were saying, cut throughs and depth of light and the gradients and all that kind of stuff and then seeing what it looks like in in the you know turn the light on it's like a yeah. bar it's like a bar at 2 a.m yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah shut the lights out it looks great <laughs> you do the three-dimensional <laughs> three so for example if we look at this one you do the three-dimensional oh, it's a pumpkin about i'd say six inches tall and you do this one and people go, you know, it's not a jack-o'-lantern, but it's a sculpted pumpkin. But you do it in such a way that when it's lit, it yeah. looks amazing. Yeah. So so this is a sculpture like you guys are doing, but I'm always aware of the hollow areas. I'm always aware of the hollow inside. And, and that is the key. That's and the key. that's just, yeah, that's what I want to, you know, and I and I did it because students will look at their piece in in the light and they'll say it's terrible and then you put a light in it and they just burst into tears because they realize it's really good yep. so this is why i i came up with this particular technique was you know that i embraced this technique let me say that because i'm sure someone else is thinking they came up with it so let me not say that <laughs> but the point is that that i love it because a student will really work hard and really work hard and hate everything they've done. And then you yep. go, okay, let's go and put a light inside. And then they come out and they're just, they can't believe it. And that's what I want. I want someone to realize that, that they can do this and will hopefully do it over. And I know they will because my class is, is full and it's still September or close. Oh, to full. Good for you. And I can't believe it. I, you know, last year, I said, as she said, what's our minimum? And I said, oh, let's do 15. But this year we've got 30 and it's, it's, it filled up so fast. And it, it you know, wow. I mean, we'll see when we, we'll see for real. But the point is, is that people were so excited about it that they want to do it again. And that makes me very happy. That's what I, I don't want you to give up, you know. Sure, and you're, you know what it is when you, the way you teach and the way you talk to people is very inspirational too. Like it's infectious. Like I watched you at Monster Palooza, and there were people that were kind of shake. Their hands were shaking, standing there talking to you. You just have a way about you. You're very. It's 
it's very i mean i loved working with you because you were very just that aura you just have that it's just okay. every, everybody is positive around terry and i love it and especially when it comes to art you're very forthcoming with just accolades like you're constantly showering people in like this positivity and it and it helps it really does well when you're watching something and thank you for saying that when you're watching something and someone is telling you all of the things they've done. Oh, but I've been here and I've been there <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. And I can't help but think that someone's going, and how does that help me? Yeah, right. How do, how, you know, okay, you met Michael Jackson, but why is that cool for me? Right. You know, and some people go, wow, I wish I could have done it. But, but most are saying you're just, you know, you've met this, there's a name drop, there's a name drop, there's a name drop. But why is it why is it good for me? And so I always want to make sure that it comes around so that people understand why this is important. You know, me talking with Michael Jackson and sitting with him um, and, and really I, I ask really deep questions. And so then I say, OK, what's in it for you? Let me tell you. And and, and people are, whoa. You know, and it's it's very important not to just say everything that you've done, even though a lot of people will say, wow, ooh, ah. But they're in, in their side, they're saying, you know, how am I, you know, how does that help me move forward? How can I get there? Right. And so I always think, you know, I'm a I'm a perpetual, I guess, a, a never ending teacher. <laughs> never ending teacher. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the horse scene. Yeah. I like the way you worked that in. That was pretty good. And now it's stuck in my skull for the next I know, sorry. Exactly. 48 hours. Well, you're the never in Turn around. <laughs> Tell me what you see. Yeah, there it is. Now you can't stop. Okay. I'll give you a dollar if you can tell me who sings that song. Oh, um, I tell you take my money. I have no idea, but you will. <laughs> but you money. do. Lamal, the uh, lead singer from Kaja Gugu. Oh my God. I, gotta, I gotta get this out of my head. <laughs> Michael, Michael's like Michael likes uh, uh, music. I like music. I love, I, uh, you did it. Oh yeah, here's one for you. What's okay. the, what's the kid reading the book's name? See the movie part of it. I have oh. no idea. <laughs> you don't Do you say my name, Bastion. Say my name. <laughs> Bastion, there we go. So McFrazzlestash, right on it. What was the horse's name? Well done. What was the horse's name? Oh, poor horse. I don't even want to think about that. Atreyu. <laughs> Atreyu. He died in the Swamp of Sorrows. There you uh, go. I think it was a Swamp of Sorrows. <laughs> if not, your, your, your group, your, your viewers will, will definitely joyfully correct they're us. Gonna, they're gonna, I'm not going to be the administrator of the uh, NeverEnding Story fan page anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're out. <laughs> No, uh, when, I, when, I, when I brought look, they've they've they had the things when I when I broadcast, I always go, I can't remember because I know they're gonna tell me. Yes, and yeah, I like yeah. what they tell me. You know, <laughs> I really it's love nice it. Jog the memory. <laughs> yeah, I, I always use the I'm 65 card. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, Art, oh, Vic Frazzle Stash, you're banned. He corrected me. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, no, that's the cool part. Trayu is the rider. Our tax, that's right. Yeah, no, I mean, our tax. That's what you like about people like, <laughs> like that. They oh, I'm them. wrong 90% of that's the time. You. I'm just so convinced that I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> when it shows up that you're wrong, that's you don't have to be right, you just have to, yeah, conviction. You can be louder, people that you are right. <laughs> <laughs> I am never right, <laughs> only uh, unless I'm wrong. Then I'm right. Oh, I am never right. <laughs> Uh, and, and one thing I wanted to add to this is, um, you know, like everything that we're doing, I was just telling Matt before the show and I, you weren't here yet, Paul is, uh, because Terry has been, here, she was actually twice on season one, not on season two, but she's on season three. So we're so happy to have her, but I was looking back at some of the carbs from back then. And one of the things that I've noticed is just the progression between, Matt and yourself about 
you guys were great before this all started, right? I mean, at, when we first started this, it was like, we're doing it kind of, you know, every week. And it was like, but now, I mean, you guys, the skill level, if it could go higher has, um, it's really impressive. And the one all the time and that, yeah, you're demonstrating yeah. to people right here that it can be done and it's already improving, you know, this is, yeah. You know, it's, and, it's and and the the thing that I wanted wanted to definitely say is that in a hundred episodes, that I think one of the things that we can super be proud of is not just the individual carves, is that we're moving this medium uh, into other people's lives, definitely changing how people look at things. Whenever I show people, like I go, oh, we do this carving show on Thursday. They're like, what is that? And then I show them, they're like, whoa, not, I mean, literally no one has ever gone. Yeah. I'm not really super into that. <laughs> like, like <laughs> right, no, they, right. see it, they want to know more about it. And Absolutely. that's the thing that I think that we should be super proud of. Well, I'm just proud to have you guys as the, uh, team and, and i'm super super grateful to terry to coming on so many times you're one of our favorite guests i mean we have such a good time it's 100 episodes and not one guest was a dud it's 100 yeah. people well you know we, we, let's say 90 people because we've had people on with a few repeats <laughs> but yeah but everybody is genuinely like i i consider them a friend a friend it's yeah yeah, yeah. Well, it's a lot of fun. It's very creative and clever. And it sucks. It sucks for my Christmas card list. I got to tell you, it's <laughs> monetarily. Oh my god! It's getting longer. Oh god! It's getting joyfully longer, even though you're like, no, yeah, it's not. Yeah, I, I'm just gonna send a. a it's it's gonna be an email this year. My yeah, Christmas card. yeah, it'll be digital. Digital. If you're getting it. It's, it's hard you're not to have a digital card, buddy. That's true. Mickey's album covers are Mickey's album covers were years. a huge yeah. highlight this year. I can't believe that's become a thing. There <laughs> you go. Yes. You know what? Um, I, I can't remember. I wish I could remember who told me, but I have thought about it before. But somebody reminded me that's not in you know an artistic person, but somebody said we should create a season one and a season two coffee table book. Oh, oh Ooh. boy, how fun. Right with all Mick with all your artwork in it and all our carvings and like some like some nice graphics of all the guests that were on and like it's just something to cool to flip through. But if you think about it, for the first two seasons coming into season three, that's almost a hundred episodes. Yeah, you know that might be something to think about. That's very Maybe. that's very there interesting. Some interest in there, you know what I mean? I like that. I know. I mean, I know I would want one. And they're I, so yeah. easy to make. My mom would. Yeah. My, my mom would. My mom has a yeah. My mom has a coffee table book I made eight years ago. <laughs> speaking, speaking of my mom, Terry, I got to throw you some uh, extra love because my mom says you're her favorite guest of all we've had, and and the I favorite moment of hers is when you pulled up that sock and did a sock puppet out of nothing. Yes. And, and did that whole thing. She still talks about this, and, and so she was uh, jumping for joy when she heard you were going to be on. So this is it's, you know on little, my Patreon page. I pulled out this character just, I was, I've been struggling a little bit guys because I've been trying to protect my mom and dad from doctors. I can't believe how many doctors are really jerks in the world. And so I was really having trouble with it. And I was really having a meltdown because I really thought that they were out to get me. And I don't like to think that people who are supposed to be helping you are actually willing to do some things that aren't cool. Yeah. So on my Patreon page, people were feeling kind of similar. So I said, well, I'm going to introduce you a friend of mine who's a puppeteer who loves puppets. He passed away. And so they invited me on. And you know how when you have a funeral of any kind, uh, it starts to go way, way down. And so I, he, he loved puppets and he really loved my characters. And so I pulled out this raven and I said, I asked the Raven, I said, how are you doing? And he said, I'm giving myself Steve after the person who passed. And so Steve, the Raven came on and just started talking and they, they, everyone on my page went crazy. When do we get to see Steve again? When do we get to see Steve? Oh, 
Like, oh, cool. and I was like, I'll bring Steve on, but I have a couple of things I got to do before I bring Steve. But it's great. Puppets are so special. And uh, so I really appreciate that. Tell her, you know, um, I have to go get Steve, Steve if she wanted to see him. So um, next time, remind right. me to bring Steve. Oh, yeah. To yeah. see what Steve's all about. He's very odd and funny. Yeah. And, that's uh, cool. I had forgotten about him, you know, and I was like, ooh, this Raymond is really funny. So I brought him on, you know, but I, yeah, I just want, you know, people say you should do more of that on your channel. And I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will at some point, you know. Yeah, I'll get around it. It's nice yeah. to pull that out of the box and they jump up and do something cool. And and I, I just don't want to commit to it forever because I don't know what kind of time I'm going to have. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, my That's my cool. my girlfriend legitimately lost her mind oh. when whenever she saw this. Like, yeah. like I, I went back. Kind of by the way, I can't believe she. Did. <laughs> yeah, like, oh. I love being baby's arms. People would say the lead person, which is Kevin right there, Kevin Clash, was the voice and did the head. Almost. And then yes, and then John Kennedy was the eyes and brows, and so the three of us have to sync together to make the baby. Uh, as cool as he was, but I loved being the arms and I thought I had the best job because I could rip and tear and hit, yep. do all the things that a kid's not supposed Bro. to do. <laughs> yeah. Loved it. Yeah, I loved it. And that hair, uh, I was also Imagineer shortly after that. And that hair is very moldable, sculptable. So when we were designing the Tower of Terror, I wasn't designing it. I was in another department, but they came and got me and they said, Terry, we have to pitch this uh, in a dog and pony. Can you come over? Cause we need you. And I was like, what do you need me for? They put me inside the mock-up of the tower of terror booth and they combed my hair. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. And then I went like this. <laughs> oh. And they absolutely loved it. People were like, okay, that's pretty crazy. As Imagineers, we do a lot of crazy stuff. That's and amazing. Really about being Imagineer is that you do what you have to do to help each other. It's really fun. That's so cool. Super fun. Yeah. That's awesome. The best. So it was crazy, crazy stories and crazy, crazy things that we did. And just, yeah, yeah. Now I'm the come here, come here, get away, go away Imagineer, which means they take me out of the box when they need me to help them catch up. And um, then they put me back in the box when they're done. And I'm fine with that because I'm, I'm doing a lot of stuff here, like the Rolly Crump chess set. So so I don't mind going and helping them out and I enjoy it an awful lot. And uh, I'm glad that they were agreed to do that, you know, to allow me to be that person where I can come and help them out when they need it and leave when they don't need it. You know, now there's a lot of people that don't want to do that. I really love that. That's real special to me. That's I mean, it's great. It, it gives you the mobility to do the things that your, your projects you're working on and then still dive back into the Disney thing, which is yeah, yeah. Uh, that fan base, which is just crazy. It is. It, they, they really love it. And, and I'm going to tell them, you know, the question I get all the time, how to be an Imagineer. I'm going to tell them the truth about being an Imagineer. Yeah, you should study and draw and learn all of that stuff. But what you really need to do is to, you know, get on social media and when you're posting your stuff. Tell us your dream. Don't just post it because like lemmings, we're going to go like, 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 yeah, like. Right. And because that's what we know how to do. There's nothing wrong with it. But if you want action to be taken, then you need to tell us what your dream is. And once yeah. you do that, then, then you know, Disney's watching. And mm. then you just decide how much you want to charge when they come to you and say, you know, we'd like to add you to our team. You know, that's a lot more fun than please yeah. sir, have a job. Being, you know? <laughs> being a pro is the best. When you wish upon a star. Yeah. Oh, and you've oh. got to tell people oh. your dream. You've got to tell them. What do you want? We don't know. That's it. So so don't be shy. Tell us what you want. You know, and so, we go. In, in honor of our 100th episode, I, I purposely did this, and I'm so glad it happened. Whoa. Uh, we have gone 100 minutes. Whoa. Whoa. So, Look at that. How fun. Yes, it Beautiful. is. Um, we usually go an hour and a half. I say it's the fastest 90 minutes on the internet, and uh, we the went 100 minutes. Said, no. And we could probably go for another 100. I'm, I'm absolutely positive of it. Um, 
But I, I wanted to go around. I wanted to see what Paul's doing, what Matt's doing, what Terry's doing as well. So let me yeah. let me start with Terry. Terry, show us uh, what you've uh, been creating. Let me get my light, and I'll show you let what I've been doing. Here's the aerial view. Bam! Look, it looks so good. No, I haven't been using yeah. it. Um, wow, nice camera. Oh, whoa! Whoa! So fantasy animal, I don't know what it is, but there he is, and he's just dragon. like you got wow. look at these like micro dragon and baboon. Like, you're insane with this micro teeth. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That was damn fast too. Yeah, I'm just I gotta tell you, be careful when you do an apple because you, you may want to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Very up. nice. You know, amazing job. Matt, show us what you got. Okay, so mine's. I started with the, with the terrified look, and what he, what I came up with is: you guys ever see Monty Python, Meaning of Life, or no? Uh, yeah, where Mister Creosote is that really big guy who explodes? But oh yeah, these, yes. There's these fish in the fish in the um, restaurant that are swimming around, and they're like, "Oh my god, here comes Mister Creosote!" Holy, and they, <laughs> so so I had this terrified look on his face, and then I'm going to make him into kind of a fish character. Oh, I like um, it. Oh, cool. So he'll be, and you got a gigantic. And I got a oh, big gosh. fat guy, so he, I got lots of meat and room to move and, yeah, you know, cool. all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, so he'll be cool someday. Is that <laughs> challenging to get through? You know what? I'm, I already can tell I'm getting close. So it's that the exterior is, is still because it's a relatively new pumpkin is, is easy to peel. But the longer these things sit, they calcify, and then it's a big nightmare. But right now they're they're too fresh to So you got to get it all done. <laughs> Got to get it done. Wow. Yeah. It's amazing. Oh, Paul. Okay. So <laughs> I, like Matt, went for the terrified roughing in part. I haven't decided what it's going to be yet. So I have left all this room for a snout of some sort when I decide what the animal is. I'm leaning towards some sort of like a, a boar or a bat. Oh, something like that. Something with the white. So oh, I left the blue. It looks very similar to that clay that's next to you. Is he trying to tell you to carve it? <laughs> I don't like your attitude, Harden. <laughs> it looks like he's trying to tell you, no, you must sculpt me. I wish. <laughs> if, if the pumpkin gets taller, you can bet your ass I will. <laughs> if I have reference right in front of me, holy that's moly. That right there. Me. I mean, he really does look like he wants you to do that. He does. He just yells at me all day. He's annoying yeah. as well. Yeah. He's he's very smug as well. So I should have carved him last week. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm I'm just kinda, you know, you know how it is. It, there's a lot of stuff to go through. And I thought this guy was gonna be because I can kind of squeeze it a little. So mm -hmm. I thought it would be really thin, but it's it's pretty good. I'm getting a lot of water, which is a good thing when you yeah. push it. So it's definitely yeah. hydrated. So I'm gonna take my time and Eventually, yeah. something will pop into my head as to what it's going to be, but I left room. <laughs> so this is going to be – this is the That's fancy the room. <laughs> and, and I have plenty of meat here to do the teeth and whatever I decide to do in there. So I'm looking Love forward it. to seeing it. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. Me too, Great. Terry. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you want to see more of Terry's work, uh, please check out her Instagram. Anywhere else where we can see? I know that you do stuff on YouTube as well, correct? Yes. Uh, I have my Ask Me Anything tomorrow at 935. And uh, you can join my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Terry Harden if you want to. Just $5. Uh, then that's because uh, it's, it's, it's not the money. It's the skin in the game. You know, if I'm going to show up, you better. That's right. Yeah. So that's kind of what I'm thinking when I when I when I have people be a part of that, and we we talk more frankly because it's behind a closed door. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we we talk about stuff I can't necessarily talk about uh, on the public stuff. There you uh, go. But uh, yeah, Patreon.com/slash Terry Harden. You just Google me, and then yep. you'll find some place you want to land if you want to land there. There you go. Um, you're very welcome. I'd love to see you. Your voice needs to be heard. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> well, we're, this is where you can find us. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok. And uh, we have so much. If, if this year hasn't been big enough, uh, we have much more to come uh, going into the carving season. Um, the 
carving contest. Uh, all those details are coming so much more. And we will be back here next Thursday with another carvers and creators. Any last words guys before we uh, sign off for this week? Yeah. Sign up for Terry's Thank you. Patreon. It's pretty Thank awesome. You. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. Yeah. And practice Thank with these guys. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> awesome. So, um, I, again, this is so awesome. Thank you so much for a hundred straight episodes. I'm not straight. We didn't go do it straight. We took a couple breaks here and there. You get a uh, vacation. Everybody yeah. deserves a little bit. Yeah, vacation. yeah, yeah. We're not robots anymore. That's right. <laughs> oh, hey, when you're carving in when you're carving in June and August, That's you're it. pretty committed. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> you are very committed. <laughs> so we'll see you next thursday for another carvers and creators thank you for joining us everyone good night good night everybody you guys